Today we have Brian Losey of Cabela's in Lehigh with us, and he's going to give us some tips on fishing for bourbon. And this ought to be particularly effective for the bourbon bass that we have coming up this following weekend at Lamy Gorge. The bourbon bass really helps out the DWR because they're trying to remove bourbon from the lake. It's really upsetting the habitat for some of the other game fish that we have, and it was illegally planted. It's really kind of trying to take over the lake as well. How, how long has uh, uh, Cabela's been there? Uh, Cabela's, uh, we're going on our 60 year and more as a company since the 50s. So. Um, for a while, we celebrated our 50th anniversary this last year. And the uh, Beehive store marked the 31st store, the first store, I believe, um, out in the Blue Brand, one of the first stores in the world for bourbon. And I've been introduced to the Cabela's Market for the next couple of years. I've been in Beehive in the high for six years. I've been with Cabela's myself for a majority of that, all for about six months of that. And I've been going to the last store for customers on a daily basis. Sharing information with everybody that we could. That sounds like a lot of fun. I know mm -hmm. it's a popular place to go to catch fishing uh, supplies and stuff like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that you like to fish flaming work. I do. Yeah. I like to fish anything. I'm going to tell you the expenses I can. But, uh, there's something about big water, big fish that's really true. And uh, being able to get out and target those species as much as possible, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't really kind of shaped out where the fish are located and where the fish are located. So it's just a very true portion of the fishing world. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I've noticed is you can go to a place to catch fish and sometimes you do really well and then all of a sudden it doesn't do well anymore. And then one of the things that I kind of learned myself is there are certain places at certain times of year that are really effective. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and really any species is that way. Regardless of the new trout, the white trout, it's like the wood or the trout, it's like the wood or the trout. Every fish has their particulars, everything they want, it's very proper as long as they can say. And uh, the fish don't know where they're supposed to be. Most people think that they get stuck on a certain spot, and the fish are in a certain spot, and they're in that certain spot. And so they tend to go to that certain area at every single time they find this fish. But the fish are very good. The fish are going to move around. We don't have to find the other ones. Now, now for birds, what kind of uh, conditions do they want? Well, birds are not unlike any other uh, cold water species of fish. They, they uh, tend to look for microclimate because they tend to target their food and try to stay close to their food. Um, one of the primary food sources for them are crayfish. They will, however, eat just about anything that can fit in their mouth. Get into a bourbon in that nine, nine and a half pound class. And you've got a fish that's approaching 40 inches. You've got something that has a mouth that can open up almost six inches. It can be able to fit as big as a, a pound protein in this thing. So you've got fish that will predate and will actively predate food forage if their primary food source is that we eat. And uh, they're just really opportunistic here. Following uh, microclimates, these fish are going to have a seasonal movement, just like a lot of micro migratory fish do during the spawning season, typically through the ice, through the January, about the January, and the February. And at times they will spawn as many as three times during the season of the ice. So there's different waves, different movements of these fish. They, you know, they tend to like shallow gradients, they tend to like uh, gravel and rocky bottoms. And to sustain that, that spawning cycle, that movement, that energy expense that they have to go through, so it's one of the best times of the year to be targeted with fish after that. So they would tend to be a little shallower and around rocky bottoms of the... Yeah, and uh, exactly. That's that's where you'll find your crayfish, typically. Um, South-facing slopes. Um, South-facing slopes almost anywhere. The Western Hemisphere is going to be the first area to receive sunlight. Uh, sunlight that might come through the, uh, the ice, uh, through the water column. Tends to change the water temperature slightly. It creates a microclimate that reflects off the cliffs, reflects off the rocks. And even a one to two degree temperature change can drive the forage into that area. If you go for spray fish in the winter, you can drive bait fish into that area. Thus, having the predator fish fall If you're not 
that catch and you probably need to move over. It is, yeah. And it, the fish uh, are the same. So they're, they're going to move the across and constantly through the source. And so moving around frequently, probably in different areas. And uh, going out there and targeting them specifically, if you're going to go out there for a week and fish them every single month, you can fish them uh, just exclusively. And then go back, go back to your hotel room or something, and put it on a map. Say, this is where we found fish, this is where we did find fish. What is the same? What is the same? Together patterns like that, you can pretty much duplicate that uh, anywhere you want to and make it take this fish on a regular basis. It's a technical part of fishing. And uh, to, I believe uh, strongly that anglers go through uh, stages, as we say, as fishermen. Uh, you start out fishing, and you're maybe four years old, you get your first fishing rod, and you're out there, and you want to get a little fish. That's, that's the goal. You want to catch as many as you can. You don't care how big they are, and then you go to through a stage where you've got to catch the one. <laughs> After you catch the one, you got to catch lots of the ones. <laughs> and then you get to the point where the jerk, the, uh, the kind of shaking out the patterns and finding out and understanding what the species are really do and how they're trying to become more of an important factor. And then, uh, you know, as you maybe start your own family and stuff like that, you get to a point that you want to share and start those uh, those individuals that are just like that fish for the first time. And uh, that's one we see that on a daily basis at the as well, too. We get people coming in from all over the world, fishing for the first time, travelers that are coming in that want to come to the location and spot uh, in an area that they've never seen before. To them, that's the first type of fishing adventure that we've been able to share with them that stage and understand this is how things are going to go. This is what you're looking for in the stages and this is what you're looking for in the stages. And it helps us that it's not going to be the that reminds me of teaching my kids to fish, mm-hmm. and nothing's more exciting than to see a kid catch a fish. They get so excited yeah. over that. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can go back to uh, it's like George on it a little bit too. And confidence. I also believe that confidence in the gear that you're using and your technique and your location stuff like that is really one of the most important aspects to fishing and locating fish in front of the bunch. Um, almost as important as finding the depth. You know, once you locate the depth of the fish and where they're at, and you're fishing in that depth consistently, even if the fish isn't hungry, you're going to get a reaction response. It's kind of like a camera on the street. They are curious. They're going to come in and expect to see what's going on. And territorial. You know, get into fish. They any type of spawning pairs you can in any species. They have that territorial stage that goes through. In my space, I'm going to get it out of there. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to do what I can to get it out of my space. And they're not going to be touching it. They're going to be getting it out of there because it's in there. <laughs> and then, you know, confidence. Confidence. And that starts the confidence to learn how to target a new species. Uh, confidence in fishing effectively with a, a new rod or a new reel or a new fishing line or a new location. And it, it kind of starts with those stages going through the people are fishing stages from the first fishing point. Now, when you're targeting bourbon, what seems to be the best kind of natural base? Absolutely natural base. Uh, something that's got a sense, it's got a lot of people trying to cater to senses. Uh, bourbon are very similar to the bourbon, they're structural. Um, the biology, I think, two attractors. They have a lot of sensory receptors and a very distinct lateral, and they can really detect a lot of vibrations and really have a good sense of smell. Almost like a slip of tongue. And uh, you want to cater to those senses. Simple things like if you were to go out to take a power off and you have a sister, or with the extra energy, trying to get things together, you make a big difference in uh, how those fish are going to react to that big presentation and that scent that you're looking for. Yeah, and that kind of really is confusing. I'm paying attention to the little things that they make so a big difference on that. Uh, predominantly suckery, the crayfish, uh, shrimp. To be real popular for that. And, and a lot of smaller portions that want to do the that the jig as a profile that you use in your size jig, something that's going to imitate uh, the size of the, the food forest for cutting the crayfish. But then something small is a lot easier for any fish species to eat a slender, thin bait than it is with a big, thick 
That was Brian Losey with Cabela's in Lehigh giving us that information. We really appreciate that. This is Rich with UtahFishFinder.com. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.